the interior of a cloud, comprised of water, ice, snow, and dust particles, is in a state of chaos. Some are close to the Earth's surface, while others tower as high as 20 kilometers above. Luke Howard, an Englishman born in 1772, named the different types of clouds. Cumulus clouds, Latin for heap, have flat bottoms with cauliflower tops. Stratus clouds, Latin for layer, are layers of clouds that are much wider than they are thick, like a blanket. And cirrus clouds, Latin for curl, have thin, wispy curls or strands. Nimbus is a term that is often used in conjunction with the three main cloud types to describe one that creates precipitation. An example of this is cumulonimbus, which is a cumulus rain cloud. This forecast model only uses data from a grid with sections of 7 square kilometers. Since most clouds are considerably smaller than 7 kilometers, their presence and influence is rarely taken into account. A great deal of rain might go unrecorded. Researchers are currently testing a new and more precise model that uses a smaller grid of 2.8 square kilometers. And with a new computer, scientists have been able to simulate the birth of individual thunderclouds. The yellow shows colder elevated areas, and the red areas depict rain. With this system, descriptions of cloud formation become more detailed and precise. But they are most interested in learning more about how individual droplets inside a cloud interact and what influence turbulence may have on cloud formation. To help research cloud structure, meteorologists rely on a microwave radiometer. This particular one investigates the position and composition of clouds and is called MICI, short for Microwave Radiometer for Cloud Cartography. How does a radiometer work? By collecting microwave radiation from space. It measures water content, water vapor, and temperature in the atmosphere. They are not just interested in short-term weather forecasting. They want to find out what role the clouds play in the climate and how they influence the thermal balance of the Earth. It is even more important that they get their forecasts correct, because clouds have an enormous influence on the greenhouse effect. Combining various cloud gauging techniques with the data from Mickey, they are able to build 3D models that are very similar to the real thing.